Now to that dramatic testimony in Bill Cosby's sexual assault trial. A rape trial that captivated the nation. Yet another high-profile campus sexual assault. He started kissing me open-mouthed as he was pulling me towards him. I was raped. I was violated in so many ways. The rape and sexual abuse of women is unfortunately a common topic in our society today. As primary reporters for these issues, news media contributes to spreading awareness of sexual assault cases. Okay. Uh, my name is Kurt Chandler. I'm an assistant uh, professor of teaching in the College of Communications. My specialty is multimedia reporting and entrepreneurial journalism. For the last 10 years, I've been teaching at Penn State. I started the multimedia journalism program here, and I was also uh, one of the people that helped start the entrepreneurial journalism program. One case covered widely was the sexual assault allegations against comedian Bill Cosby that spurred opinions from millions of viewers worldwide. His trial continues today even after accusations by numerous women. Similarly, even after eight different women accused President Trump of sexual assault, many of his supporters begged to push these allegations under the carpet. So the first thing that comes to mind when you hear about sexual assault in the media is usually, is she telling the truth? I don't think the media handles it well at all. A lot of people try to justify men's actions by saying boys will be boys. Yeah, like the media ignores the fact that the girl came, overcame so much. So as a police reporter, my job was to uh, uh, just go to the different police departments. I would physically drive down to the police, to the police department in the town that I was in and I would read all the police reports and they were public record, they were on a clipboard, you could pull them out. And so, you know, part of that mix was sexual assaults. Um, so I knew the names of the people involved and I knew what the initial allegations were and what each side's story was. And my job was to figure out how much of that newspaper readers uh, should know or needed to know. Hollywood and the White House aren't the only places we hear about sexual assault. These crimes are widely present on college campuses across the United States, where the most popular case to obtain media coverage was when Stanford student Brock Turner was convicted of sexually assaulting an unconscious woman. Very rarely does somebody just get snatched up off the street and assaulted. In fact, in 40 years, I only know one person that that's happened to. Um, most of the time, uh, sexual assault, at least what I was reading on police reports, was, was people who knew each other. Often alcohol was involved, things got out of hand. Yeah. Over 17 million American women have been victims of attempted or completed rape since 1998, with women in college being three times more likely to experience this type of sexual violence than women in general. Dealing, one of the challenges, I guess, for journalists dealing with sexual assault is, is what do you want to show? If somebody comes forward and says that I've been assaulted and there's a pattern of assaults, do you want to reveal who they are? You don't want to, you know, sort of put somebody through the assault twice by the way that you, you write about it. But one of the things that people do when they suffer trauma is they may not tell you completely accurately what happened because what they're looking for is for you to respond the same way they feel. So if your response isn't horrifying enough, they'll tell you something a little bit more horrifying so that you now feel what they feel. And from their point of view, they just want you to understand what it feels like, and they're less worried about whether what they're telling you is totally accurate, and they may not even, aware, they may not even be aware that what they're telling you isn't totally accurate. Um, you know, often there's two very conflicting versions of the story, and so you have to decide, you know, should I tell one or the other? Should I tell both? Uh, if they're conflicting enough, did something even happen? Yeah, you know, what sort of, the, you know, so for me, um, you know, the fact that somebody went to the police and filed charges usually means that something bad happened or that, you know, very, very seldom does somebody just make it up. Although that happens too. That happened uh, when I was working for the Post-Gazette two or three times in Pittsburgh. We had women who uh, were you know, cheating on their significant other and sort of got caught and then blamed it of being raped by a person of the opposite race or from another race. And so we had this huge racial explosion that happened in the city. And then it turned out that it was just somebody trying to not be in trouble with their, you know, with their, with their significant other. So, I mean, there's, there's huge minefields. And you have to be very careful about what language you use and how you depict a scene. And, uh, and just the, all the way through the, the legal process, you have to be really careful about what you're saying.
observing the news coverage on sexual assault trials and reports begs us to wonder how the representation of these cases is affecting the minds of the public. Are we doing justice to the victims of such horrendous crimes by providing accurate data and enough support? You know, I think that one of the things that's important to do is just to sort of uh, listen to people around you. When the Me Too thing started happening, one of the things I did is I asked all the women in my family, you know, Me Too? And the answer was universally, yeah. One of the interesting aspects of the Me Too is that I think that there's a higher reporting rate now. That people, you know, once somebody reports that this happened to me and other people say, okay, they, you know, you know, the world didn't end for her, maybe I should say something too. And the same thing with guys who get assaulted. And you're seeing it's sort of a ripple effect with people coming forward and reporting. But we'll see how long that lasts. I mean, if nothing really comes out of this, two years from now, are, are people still going to be reporting at the same rate that they are now? And even at the rate they're reporting now, researchers tell us that it's not even close to the, the number of people who are actually assaulted, because I think that the majority of people still never report it. This being said, the American Association of University Women stated that most U.S. colleges actually reported zero incidents of rape in 2015. These reports displayed by the media cannot always be interpreted as exact numbers, since oftentimes they only represent the willingness of students to come forth after experiencing sexual assault. Um, one of the things that the, the, the people who are predators often will do is they'll name the accusers because they want to discourage people from coming forth. And so the first thing that they'll do is say, this is the person who's making this complaint against me, and this is what you need to know about her. And uh, you know, that's, that tells you a lot of, about the, I mean, it's that whole control aspect that ends up in the rape in the first place. So that's not surprising that person would take that tactic. Well, my job is to make the community aware of what's actually happening out there in a responsible way. Sexual assault cases are most prominent on college campuses. With this in mind, we as a Penn State community can take small steps to increase education on sexual violence and its representation in the media. As a call to action, we can push for various modifications of our course requirements and safety measures around campus. We aim for a required Penn State course, possibly integrated into our freshman year seminar courses, that educates students on the various resources for reporting sexual assault and receiving support after such crimes. Most importantly, the course should define the strict criteria for consent, the biased media representations of sexual violence, and the importance of being responsive and respectful to those around you. This course will strive to decrease sexual violence on Penn State's campus and increase awareness of the stereotypes surrounding sexual assault that are spread by the media.